My I-751 is due and my spouse hates me. Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. Ah, the old pesky I-751. The I-751 is the petition for removal of conditions. When you receive a conditional green card at the end of the two years after the start date on that green card, you're going to have to file an I-751 petition for removal of conditions. So typically this is filed jointly by the two spouses, by the U.S. citizen or green card holder and the person who received conditional residence. And if you have received your green card before the two-year anniversary of your marriage to the U.S. citizen or green card holder petitioner, you're going to have to file this I-751 and you're going to have to submit extra evidence, extra marital evidence, and demonstrate that the marriage is in fact still ongoing and still legitimate. But the question is, can I get this approved if things are rocky in my marriage? And the answer to that question is yes. Yes, you can get an I-751 approved even if your spouse hates you. Now, whenever I have a consult or talk to somebody, the first question I always ask is, let's think about a traffic light, red, yellow, or green. Red is your U.S. citizen spouse is going to do everything they can to keep you from staying in the United States. They're going to write letters. They're going to go down to the field office. They're going to say mean things about you that you only married them to get a green card. Yellow is they're just going to sort of stay out of it. They don't care if you stay or if you go. They're done with you, but they don't care if you stay in the United States. And then green is that they're actually willing to help you. And of course, that's the best situation. And as immigration lawyers, if we're getting involved in what we call an I-751 solo, that is a one after marriage, our job is to see if we can get the people who are red to yellow or who are yellow to green. So we have helped our clients do that. And the way that we do it is we first do a very deep dive with the applicant, the person who's trying to get the permanent green card, the 10-year green card. And we hear their whole story from start to finish. How did you meet? What was your status when you met? How did the relationship begin? How did it progress? How did you guys decide to get married? How did you decide to apply for an immigration benefit, stay in the United States, all those things, all the way up until the time of filing. In other words, we also talk about how the marriage went south, and we try to get as much detail as we can. I'm talking a four or five page single space statement from the beneficiary. And we then think about that, reflect on it, and then we try to reach out to the U.S. citizen spouse. And we say, hey, Abdullah here told us about your relationship, told us how everything didn't work out. And we're sorry about that, but we'd really like to see if we can keep Abdullah in the United States. Would you be willing to help us out? I want to send you a short affidavit that sort of tracks what Abdullah told me, but put it in your words about the relationship and about your position on whether Abdullah should get to stay and get a green card. And that's something that we've done many, many times. And you'd be surprised how after the divorce is over and after things have calmed down, the U.S. citizen is sometimes willing to do that. So... You can get it approved even though if they say they want to keep you from getting your permanent green card or keep you from staying in the United States. We've had situations where we have seen those mean letters. We have had to explain a lot of things. And again, that's why that detailed statement is really important. In fact, in the majority of these cases, we've gotten it approved without an interview on the 751. So we've had situations over and over where we've submitted so much evidence and such detailed affidavits that USCIS approved the case without an interview. In fact, I would say of probably the 20 or 30 times we've done this, we've only had interviews in two or three cases. So it is possible to get your I-751 approved, even if you're divorced. Now, the one tricky thing is there's these windows of time, right? So sometimes the marriage is falling apart right around the time the 751 is due, and that's tricky because the couple thinks they might be able to get back together. And so we would suggest in you know, some situations going ahead and applying for the 751 together and then hopefully things get better and the marriage lasts and they're able to go to an interview if they have one or just get the case approved without an interview. Um, But then if things go sour, you know, then you're in that time frame where somebody's moved out. Have you updated your address with USCIS? Have you started developing evidence of why the marriage fell apart and those kinds of things? Because there's a, a tricky situation where in order to file for an I-751 solo, you have to actually be divorced. So the timing is really important here. And, and when you start jointly and then get divorced, there's a lot of moving parts. Some attorneys like to try to convert the I-751 
51 jointly filed into an I-751 solo. Typically, if we can, we would prefer to file a whole new application. And one thing I want to mention, you should never feel like staying in an unsafe situation just to get your 751 approved. If things are bad in the marriage, you got to protect yourself. You got to do everything you can to stay sane and to stay safe. So don't feel like you have to stay in the marriage in order to get this 10-year green card and then, of course, citizenship later. So if you need help with this, these are not easy cases. This is, these are the kinds of cases that I definitely think you need an attorney to help you. You can call us at 314-961-8200. Email us info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. We also have a lot of free resources for you, including our Immigrant Home Facebook group. We have thousands of members in there talking about the immigration process every day. And then, of course, we have our YouTube channel and our TikTok. Our TikTok is at Immigration Hacking. And our YouTube you can find just by Googling Immigration Lawyer Jim Hacking. And then you can subscribe to the channel. You get updates whenever we make videos like this one. And you get updated when we go live in our Immigrant Home Facebook group and on the YouTube channel. If um, you have a question for me, you can come on the show. And I do that three or four times a week. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.